correspondent Daniel Bushell is at the Shlipovsky Medical Center. So good to see you. That's where some of the injured are being treated. What can you tell us about the condition of the wounded, Daniel? Well, of the 65 injured, the worst wounded have been brought here to the Skivsovskova Hospital, and uh, the injured are mostly young adults. Five men, three women, seven are in critical condition, one has life-threatening injuries, and the doctors are operating on that person as we speak. All the others are still in the operating room. They arrived at 9 a.m. Uh, in the morning, and it's now past, uh, past five here in Russia, Moscow time, and they're still operating, such as the severity of their injuries. Most are suffering from massive internal injuries, ruptured spleens, destroyed stomach organs, uh, suffered when the full force of the blast hit them in the middle of the body in the underground stations. Um, there are also broken limbs and uh, heavy cuts suffered when marble and glass flew from the f force of the explosion. Uh, we can now hear from the father of one of the victims. I was on the way to work when my 18-year-old son called. He said there was a big explosion. His neck and leg are hurt. He was in that same carriage where the explosion happened. I haven't seen him yet. He is in pain. We've also managed to speak to a witness at the Park Kulturi, the second explosion on the underground station. I was going to work and was at Park Kultura station when it happened. I panicked and ran away. Now I'm going to the hospital where the people I was in Metro with have been taken to. That's the latest on the injuries here at the Skivsovskova Hospital. Rory. Well, Daniel, I had mentioned 64 injured. You say 65. I'm assuming your numbers are the latest updated ones. Um, with such levels of um, necessary patients, are medical authorities coping okay with the situation? Are they overwhelmed, perhaps? Yeah, there was a rapid response from the authorities, from the ministry, from the uh, emergencies ministry, the other ministries involved, the emergency services, as well as private individuals. Um, when the, uh, within minutes of the blast, emergency ministry helicopters have been flying the worst wounded to the hospital here. We've also had hospitals coming, uh, ambulances coming in regularly to the hospital uh, at constant intervals, bringing new uh, injured patients. Um, and also, we've seen people uh, just coming off the street to help. Uh, offering to take people in their own cars and they've been bringing them in their own cars, injured people, to the hospital to help them. Uh, roads around the hospital have been closed to help ambulances and other staff get the injured to the hospital more quickly. Prime Minister Vladimir Putin says the priority now is to treat the injured. The number one priority is to treat the injured and uh, he's pledged to provide all necessary assistance to the victims and their families. We've spoken to the head of the hospital here. He said that the the chief doctor, he says that all necessary equipment is here in place to treat the victims and they are treating them as quickly and as well as they can. We can speak now to one of the emergency staff who was present at the explosion. I was at Park Kultura station when the injured were evacuated from there. It was done pretty fast, in five to seven minutes. All those who couldn't walk were carried out and those who could left the station after that. The medical service has done all it can. Those who were injured were taken to hospital. We had two helicopters. Both stations attacked had enough emergency vehicles. So now people are getting treatment. So as you can see, there's been a, a fast response from all the necessary relevant uh, ministries and authorities. Uh, Rory. Daniel, let's talk about the emotional impact for those victims who were exposed to these suicide bombings and the emotional scars for, for years to come, possibly. Are the victims receiving any psychological help after such an event? Yes, a centre has been set up uh, in the hospital over there to provide psychological support to the family, the friends, the relatives of the victims. Uh, families and friends of the victims have been arriving here, uh, some in a severe state of shock, uh, uh, w w you know, relying on family members for physical support. Um, we spoke to a man who was in the carriage when one of the blasts took place. His friends are inside at the moment in serious condition, and he's come based also in an extreme state of shock, I must say, barely able to speak. Uh, he's come to help how he can and also to bring anything that the victims may need. Psychologists are here to provide support. And at the entrance to the hospital, there is a notice board with uh, information about the victims uh, that's also available on the website of the emergencies ministry. And a hotline has been set up for families and friends of the victims. Let me give you the number, um, families and friends, to get information on the victims. Plus 
seven four nine five six two two fourteen thirty. That's plus seven four nine five six two two fourteen thirty. Because I must say, there's not just Russians uh, here. Uh, there have been also foreign victims. I've heard Malaysian citizens. Uh, journalists have also been injured in the blast. So it's not just a Russian phenomenon. There have been people injured uh, from abroad as well. Okay, reporting live from the Sklikosovsky Emergency Hospital, Daniel Bushel. Thank you.